All right, we're here with our micro squirt. Um, this will be not going into this car because that would be illegal per the rules. So we're not gonna run it. But I bought this for, you know, just to have around, you know, we'll show it. We'll mock it up on this, you know, just uh, for the time being to show you guys, but I'll get more into detail. All right, so I got this from MMX. I'm a dealer for MMX, so I get a little bit cheaper. So EFI Source is the one who makes this. You can get this from Blackbird. Uh, Blackbird puts their own sticker on there. I'm assuming that they get it from them also. So this is gonna be your main computer, the micro squirt. Um, shows you what the pinouts are on it. This is for Gen 3 Hemi, so it comes with this harness. I believe they're 840 to the public, I'm pretty sure. Uh, if you want a little bit cheaper, send me a message and get, you, get it for you a little cheaper. Uh, but here's the hardest. I mean, this ignition module, or this is for your coil, your coil igniter module, not ignition module. Um, so this is pretty much just as big as that. So all this stuff, this will be like underneath your dash or whatever, wherever you want to hide it. This is your connector. And this is just a little fuse and relay and a relay with a fuse. Don't know what's up with the double fuse. Um, so these are the only wires you have to connect to make it run as far as giving power to the system. All right, so we're back here with our system. Uh, I went and did some more research so I don't sound as dumb as usual. So, the big red wire. That goes to your battery, it says on it. This is your ignition switch. This, so, most of these set, or connectors, you see, those are gonna be your coils. So obviously there's eight coils. And this is your coil igniter module. So this goes in, tells which coil with the fire. Uh, I'm not sure why it doesn't do it with this and why you need that. Um, not an electrical engineer, so can't get too sophisticated on it. But this here, that's gonna be your map sensor plug, purple three pin, it's a big three pin. See this little three pin, that's gonna be for your crank sensor. And your crank sensor number is gonna be 5149230AA. And that's for an 09 to 12 Hemi. So that's gonna be the crank sensor you want. Not sure why, but that's the one they tell you to use, so you should probably use it. These two, those are just grounds. I'm assuming that they're gonna bolt the back, or back of your head where the factory grounds are, but we'll see once we get it laid out. And then that's your three sensors that don't go to your coils, so your actual sensors. So crank, little three, big three, that's your map. I'm not gonna use this, you probably won't use this and then your coolant temperature sensor. And the rest of these, coil. And then this is gonna be your input for your computer or laptop, whatever you're using. Um, this is a 2.5 jack, and here is the connector for that. So this is an RS232, uh, and then this is a 2.5 millimeter jack. Looks like an aux cord, but an aux cord's actually a 3.5. So slightly smaller than that. And then here's a crank sensor just laying there. Not the right one. I don't have the right one, so I'm gonna have to buy that. And then, I don't know if you can see, but there's numbers in there and tells you what the pins are. So if you wanna trace pins and stuff. So on MMX's website, and on the video, they talk about a pink wire going to your O2 sensor output. So that wasn't included in this pigtail. Not sure why. Um, but what is in there is your fan wire, and that's gonna be your, it's gonna go to pin seven, and that's your white and yellow. So this one here, and that pin seven is called FIDL, so it's uh, usually your, for your idle control if you go into the micro squirt like manual. This is for idle control, so I'm not sure why it's fan, because this isn't a continuous like 12 volts to kick a fan on. So this would be like a, a varying voltage to control your idle. So I'm not sure why the fan wire is in there and it's definitely not gonna do anything for a carbureted setup. So that's odd that this is out. 
may have just been a mix-up. So I'm assuming this is just a mix-up. And then your green and yellow, that's gonna be your tack. This is an out. So this is an out and this is an out. Actually, all three of these are out, whereas one should be in from uh, what they say when you buy it. So this is your tack out, so this will just plug into your tack. And then this is the purple one is gonna be your fuel pump. And that's gonna be pin eight. This is these two are actually right next to each other in this connector. And I won't be using that. Uh, I'm gonna run a mechanical pump with a belt. Um, more than likely you're gonna need this because I doubt you'd want to spend the money when you just get a cheap electric fuel pump. But that's their tack. That's a good one to have, obviously. This, this is useless. So I'm gonna pull this connector apart, pull this wire out, put it in pin 34, which is what the input of uh, wideband should be on the connector. Um, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I don't really need it. And more than likely, I'm not gonna data log because you have to buy another add-on for this, like an, something similar to this, you know, something separate. And I mean, it'd be nice to have, but I can just run a wideband. I have a wideband, I can just put that in there and then read it. I mean, it's a little tricky to read while you're racing, but it is what it is. So, I mean, I wrote down everything on here. So if you just want to pause the video and screenshot that or whatever, but just going through that. So, yeah, and then they reference it. So in means like it's an in signal and then out means it's an output. So there's a crank sensor that, oh, and more than likely you don't have this plug-in on your computer. So you're gonna need an adapter. So you need a serial RS232. So serial means it's the female side, I'm assuming. Uh, well, I guess this is the female side for the connector, but it has the nuts on it. So whatever that's worth, I'm not a super computer guy. So whatever, but it should be, if you do serial RS-232 to USB, it should come up with a side that actually has the female threads on it. So this can screw and tighten up. And if you're wondering why it says do not waterproof, obviously this is going in there. And dirt car, there's mud. We wash them every week, or supposed to. And... You know, this is all open. This ignition module is open. And back when I was a little kid, I used to play with RC cars all the time. And on your ESC, on a like an RC car, we used to dip them in electric, liquid electrical tape, and then it just coats the whole thing. So I emailed them and asked them if that was okay. And they said, it's not okay. They said, put it in a waterproof box or something. Um, but they emailed me back the next day right away. So that was pretty cool. So yeah, don't do that. I thought it was a good idea. Apparently it's not, but I'm going to go lay this out so you can kind of see it on the engine and what it looks like. Obviously I don't have the right crank sensor, so I'm not going to plug that in. I should have the right coolant temp sensor and the map we're not going to worry about, but I also need to depin this and pin it where I want just so I have the option to do it if I so choose. But there you are. That's the whole harness kind of a general overview of what you should have to do. Okay, so this is where your, this, like on a factory car, this is a car time cover car water pump. So this has a little tube that comes up here, bolts right there, has a little tab off it, comes back here and then goes up into the heater core. So what I did is I just ran a three eighths tap through it and then also use a wrench when you do it or else your socket will break it. But I took a picture of the part number This is the, the, what the connector on the harness is designed for. As you can see, it has a bunch of tangs coming off of it. And it's more of a square. The other style is more of a rectangle. So, pop that on there, maybe. Maybe the other way. Maybe the other way. Maybe the other way. Goes like that. Boom. So it goes like that. Uh, but anyways, yeah, three eighths pipe tap. Tap that. Put that sensor in, because this is where my gauges are going. So this is where that would normally be. And there's also one up here. But I think I'm gonna drill that out and put the bigger tap up in here, because this or 
This sensor is for the dummy light, so it's at 235 degrees, so I'll kick that on for the gauges. But it's way too small down there. And up there, there's a lot more meat to do it. I also have that over there. I'm not exactly entirely sure what I'm gonna do yet. I just need to do something. But anyways, there's that. Then into your coils. And then your math is gonna remain unplugged over there. And it'll look the same over there. Come over here. Go through the mid plate. And it kind of kicks out and does a 90, so you may have to pull a little more out. You run it down in there. Yeah, she'll work. But I need to go get one of those crank sensors. I thought I had one somewhere, but I don't know what I did with it. And yeah, so that just goes across. Yeah, I don't know. That's going to be pretty close to fitting. We got to try that out. All right, so this would be where it's going to end up going. I got to pull this coil and stuff out of there, wash some bird poop off, you know, the usual. So this is going to be our main battery power, which is going to go to this side. That's where our main battery goes into. And then there is going to run to a switch over here. That's where my switches are. And this obviously plugs in. Leave that accessible so you can do some stuff. All these wires, we decided, other than the tachometer, nothing applies to me. So I already have it labeled and cut off to my tack. So that's going to plug into there. And then over here, I actually could route this back through the intake so it's not hanging out here in the front. Looks kind of goofy coming in, zigzagging, but goes out the front. And then, show right here. So this is gonna go to your back of your head, just like the factory would, like I figured. And this is gonna 180 right there. So both heads, that's how the factory is. That's the math one. I'm probably just gonna cut that off. Um, yeah, or I might keep it because Eventually, Prefix is coming out with the distributor kit. It's in the prototype stage. Um, Jody Cash has been updating me on that. He does a lot of Mopar stuff in Circle Track, and he's got probably the nastiest Gen 3 that's going in a Circle Track car. So follow him on Facebook, Mopar Mafia Racing. Uh, he posts all his updates in there. So once I get that distributor kit, this is going to go away. I'm going to give it to my dad. My dad's going to put it on his Dakota. Uh, that's just a street car. It's not a circle track car but uh come over here nice and neat and then where it splits off down here for my application i wish it was a tiny bit longer you could, i'm not a huge fan of that bend but most people aren't gonna have a mid plate so that's kind of what's screwing me as far as keeping it nice and neat but it does come with nice rubber grommet on there for that so i could cut that out probably not going to but there's a lot of stuff going on for a circle track car, but you want to run the best. That's what you got to do, right? So if you like this, subscribe, like, turn on the notifications, stuff like that. And then you'll follow along and we'll update it and getting it running and all that stuff. Obviously there's a lot of cleanup work, but I just wanted to show you kind of a general overview and what I found. Um, with the system itself what it looks like on an engine and if you're gonna i mean most people who follow me are dirt track guys so if they want to do this things to look out for and such and just how it's going to look but yeah thanks for watching we'll see you later